it's a book for uh, Chicagoans to read and walk outside and look at the city in a different way. It's a uh, book for non-Chicagoans to uh, reconsider what they think about Chicago. And it's also a book in which uh, I try to talk about some of the ways in which Chicago is uh, influencing uh, what I call urbanism in many cities in the United States and around the world. Everybody procrastinates. Everybody procrastinates. But not everybody's a procrastinator. And what I try to cover in this book is to address all four of those groups. If you know someone who is, if your life has been affected by them, if you live with someone who's a procrastinator, and if you are a procrastinator, I try to cover this. For the last 20, 25 years, I've been studying this topic. And when I went into this field in the late 80s, there was nobody doing any scholarship on procrastination. So everything I touched was publishable in, in golden. And I would do lots of, it was great. It was, it was great for my career. I stepped forward, lifting the hem of my skirt. The gypsy opened his mouth and closed his eyes, ready for the drink. But I stood back several inches from his face and wrung my skirt out onto the dusty ground, onto the dried entrails of the poor horse that had died for the sins of the man. The water dropped onto the dust and vanished. The man, hearing the sound, opened his eyes, struggling and cursing. I spit in his face, and the white spittle caught in his mustache and hung there like a bit of spider silk. I was never so satisfied as I was at that moment, watching him suffer. I thought of his daughter, of her fear and pain, of her sadness that no one in this world had stepped forward to protect her, not even the man who should have loved her most. I'm a death penalty defense lawyer, and I've seen just about enough of law and order. If I never see another one, it's just fine with me. And if uh, I am tired of, you know, all prosecutors are wonderful and all of us are just scheming, slimy people that look around for those ugly little technicalities to get our guilty, cardboard, cut out, evil people off. And nobody is only the worst thing they've ever done in their life. And I wanted to share the humanity of my clients and a little bit about my story. Until someone, a stranger, a dark-skinned woman with natural hair and a storefront library laid a book in front of me and the language looked like me, walked like me, talked to me, pulled me into his rhythms and stairs, slapped me warmly into his consciousness and read rain and books and sun and books, where each other's words and winds, where each other's breath and smiles, where each other's memories and mores, we build our stories page by page chapter by chapter, poem by poem, play by play. I'm an organic gardener and um, I teach environmental ethics and my area of interest these days is the locavore movement and the whole idea that we should pay attention to where we actually are. Um, it's nice to drink uh, a bottle of Great Bordeaux, um, but you're going to taste some nice wines from uh, the Midwest here tonight. Learning to love your own place also means learning the taste of your own place. Usnavi, the protagonist, uh, who has always been a very militant uh, supporter of the revolution, is having a, a very difficult time. All of his friends want to leave. His daughter wants to leave. His wife is suddenly quite ambivalent. And everyone is very, very engaged in the black market, which has him heartbroken because the black market, of course, is breaking the law. And he feels that it's very important to do what is right. We are talking this evening about books, and we've heard about some very creative and interesting texts. And in our co-edited volume, we suggest that the body can be read as a text. Like similar to a book, the body can be read. And we do this all the time. What's unique about our volume is that it critically examines the way the black body is read and misunderstood, and also how it's celebrated. 